So the most important thing when it comes to rectangular hyperbolas is an asymptote. And you need to know what an asymptote is. So it's a straight line that constantly approaches a given curve, but it doesn't meet at any infinite distance. So we're going to underline two phrases here, does not meet and any infinite distance. And so if the two lines do not meet, there will be no intersection. So we know for this, we do not have an X intercept and we do not have a Y intercept as we can see from our rectangular hyperbolas on our graph. So the asymptotes are the two lines associated with the graph which describe its shape and there are two types there are vertical asymptotes and there are horizontal asymptotes so we're going to start off with horizontal asymptotes and this is where as x gets larger y approaches zero so you can see with our top right hyperbola as the values of x get larger it approaches the x axis uh, where y would be equal to zero but we know by our definition of an asymptote that our rectangular hyperbola and our x axis will never meet so what we can write is as x approaches an infinite value y approaches zero and so with our top right graph we would say that y approaches zero from a positive side uh, and this is because the it's where the values of x are positive however if we were talking about our hyperbola in the bottom left corner we would say it's as x approaches infinity and y approaches zero from a negative side because the values of x are negative so our next type of asymptotes are very vertical asymptotes. This is where x approaches zero from either direction and the magnitude of y becomes very large. So we can see with our both of our hyperbolas, we'll look at the one in the bottom left, when x starts to approach zero along the y-axis, y starts to approach infinity. So we can write as x approaches zero for our top right, it would be from a positive side. So we'll write that uh, y approaches infinity. And as x approaches zero from a negative side, y approaches infinity again. So the form of a rectangular hyperbola, it comes as y is equal to a over x minus h plus k. a is our dilation, h is our movement sideways, and k is our movement up and down. So with our dilation, when a is equal to 1, the hyperbola stays the same size. When a is greater than 1, the hyperbola gets smaller. And when a is less than 1, the hyperbola gets larger. Reflection. So if a over x minus h is negative, the graph is reflected. So what does this mean? It just means that our rectangular hyperbolas are flipped over 180 degrees. So as we can see, our normal rectangular hyperbola is in example 1. But if a over x minus h is to be negative and we reflect it, it would become how it looked in example two. Translation. So if we draw up our formula, y is equal to a over x minus h plus k, that is our formula. So let's come up with some values. Let's say a is three over x minus one plus two. So we know h is equal to one and k is equal to two. And as we can see for our vertical asymptote, it's equal to h. So we can write x intercept is equal to one and our y intercept is equal to 2. And so we know these are the values of our rectangular hyperbola, which we cannot get. And we'll see that in the worked example. So for our worked example, we have y is equal to 2 over x plus 1 minus 3. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to find our values. So we know a is equal to 2, h is equal to negative 1, and k is equal to negative 3. So we can now use our h and k values to find our asymptotes. So for our vertical asymptote, we know that we get this when x equals negative 1. And for our horizontal asymptote, we get this when y is equal to negative 3. Okay, so now we're going to solve for our x and y intercept. So we're going to take our equation. We'll start off with the y intercept. This is where x is equal to 0. So y is equal to 2 over 1 plus minus 3. Therefore, it's equal to 2 minus 3. And our y int is equal to negative 1. To solve for our x intercept, y is equal to 0. So we have 0 is is equal to 2 over x plus 1 minus 3. And now we're going to add 3 to both sides. So we can say 3 is equal to 2 over x plus 1. And now we times both sides by x plus 1. So 3x plus 3 is equal to 2. And we can minus 3 from both sides. So 3x is equal to negative 1. And if we divide both sides by 3, we get our x int is equal to negative 1 over 3. So now we're going to move on to our graph and sketching our hyperbolas. So we need to put in 
in our asymptote. So for our vertical asymptote, it's when x is equal to negative 1. So we know our curves cannot touch the value of x and negative 1. So we draw a line and our hyperbolas cannot touch that line. And for our horizon asymptote, it's when y is equal to negative 3. And so our hyperbolas cannot touch negative 3. And so now we're going to put our points on the graph. So our intercepts, we have y is negative 1 and x is negative 1 over 3. And now we can just create our curve. And that's our first rectangular hyperbola. And our second one should just mirror 